Nation. Welcome to this edition of Nation Night Fights Weekly Boxing Report Special Interview Edition. I am your boy, Hijacker Mike, and this show is presented by Our Nation Sports Show, where you get your weekly boxing reports, fight cards, updates, fight results, future fights, rankings, and special interviews like today, the very first. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let me introduce you, our guest for tonight. During the start of this interview, Zoom had a glitch, so the first few minutes of the interview was lost, but we were able to catch up and still get a good 30-minute interview with our guest. So here, let me introduce our guest to you and get into the interview. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce to you a former professional boxer in the heavyweight division who, as an amateur, won over 80 bouts as well as winning the Pennsylvania State heavyweight title. He was heavily praised for his hand speed and footwork, which was said to be unusual for heavyweight boxers. In 2007, he would win the vacant USBA heavyweight title with a seventh round TKO versus Derek Rossi. In 2010, he would become the mandatory challenger for the WBO world heavyweight title, which was held by Vladimir Galichko at the time. Klitschko at the time was noted saying today's guest was the best American boxer right now at the time going into their fight. He also was ranked number two heavyweight contender by the Ring Magazine. In his professional career, he had a total of 47 fights with a record of 42 wins, five losses, with 23 coming by the way of KO. I introduce to the nation former professional heavyweight boxer from the city known as the city of brotherly love, the fighting city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, fast Eddie Chambers. Uh, what year? What year was that that he fought Leonard? Ah, man, I wish I could. I, I, I don't even want to lie, but I know it was just maybe I think sometime in the early 70s, maybe. maybe yeah, something like that. I know he fought. I know he fought in the seventies, but I think he fought even earlier than that. So I'm not really not a hundred percent sure, but he definitely fought him in the amateur. Um, so like that that was a long time ago for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I wasn't even yeah. born when it happened. So gotcha. Do you uh, do you know if there's any footage of that fight or no? He, you know, he did have footage of some of his fights as an amateur. My dad had about 150 amateur fights with Giles. Wow, couldn't believe it either. He went. He tried. I don't know if he. I don't know how many national tournaments he went to. Um, I don't. I know he didn't win any. And back then, boxing was was king. Everything was going on over there with boxing. So, um, and he was a 132 pounder. And look at me, big fat guy, at heavyweight. But he was 132 when he was fighting. Uh, well, so, man, you you had some amazing foot and speed and handwork in during your career, man. You you were agile. You know, looking at a lot of your fights, uh, when your opponent would attack. If you got hit with a one-two punch, that third and fourth punch coming, you were able to move quickly out the way and surprise your opponent. So you had some good footwork and hand speed yourself. Thank you. To be honest, the one-two, I, I wasn't trying to be there for either. But yeah. <laughs> the first, the first, I honestly, the reason we're having this conversation and me talking the way I can is because, once again, my dad had one of the first things I did when I came into the gym was get in the ring and, and exchange shots. So Okay. I would literally, the first day I came, the very first day I came in to compete, I was sparring. Now, I had a little bit of a tiny bit of experience before, you know, in the house with him working out and things. But I think that was at when I was nine years old. I didn't start competing until like 13, 14 years old. 13, I was. So, you know, there was a lot I had to, you know, relearn, like wrapping my hands, and little things like that, little, little small nuggets of knowledge like that that I can forget over time uh, if you don't do it. Um, then, after figuring out how to wrap my hands or get my hands wrapped, I'm jumping right in the ring with one of the guys, one of the young guys who actually was experienced and did actually really well, which was surprising to me because I had no confidence back then. But uh, I guess this was my sport. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it kind yeah. of shocked me. I'm not a fighter, you know. That's, well, my mentality is not for that. Yeah, I understand. So, yeah. so as you were coming up, watching your dad fight a little bit, who were some of your idols coming up in the in the boxing game? Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. There's so many. The first real guy that I really was a big fan of, and trust me, me being a heavyweight had nothing to do with the fact, and, and well, I say with the fact, but with who I really idolized growing up. I always liked the lighter weight fighters yeah. because I was always a 
a big skill guy. You know, not saying the heavyweights don't have skills because they absolutely do, yeah. but sometimes it can be overshadowed by their size and sheer strength and, and, and athleticism at that size. So for me, it was always like, well, Shane Mosley was a big favorite of mine when I came in. Big yeah, time man. favorite. Like, man, I watched that dude so much. I even watched his training for him and tried to do right. whatever he did. You know okay. what I mean? To, then, you know, as I got to know more about boxing, started to understand more and I just see it who the guys were and the personality and how, and how talented they were, how strong he was or whatever. With Shane, he was very skilled, but at the same time, there was a lot of things he was lacking. Now he's an all time great. What I, what can I really say about Shane? But you know, there's certain things, you know, that of course, if you want to be critical of a great fighter, there's always the little things. So once I watched him and then I started to watch other guys like Floyd Mayweather. And now my all time favorite, one of my all time favorites was James Tony. James Tony. He has lights out. So much skill. Like, it ain't even about the lights out. The lights out was just like a little, it was like something to like, I don't know, for, for a regular person that really doesn't watch boxing or understand the sport of boxing, kind of falls, oh, he lights out, he knocks everybody out. Oh, I yeah. want to watch him. There's so many things that guy can do defensively and offensively. And he has so much heart at the same time. It's like to try some of the things that he tried and done over the years and made a part of his game, takes a lot of heart, a lot of balls. Pause, yeah. pause, I didn't want to say it like that. So I was, uh, nothing to show him, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? You're but good, it takes good. a lot, man. And James had it, had it in abundance, man. It was like, when I watched that guy fight, man, I literally, him, I literally tried to mimic. I worked on that stuff day in and day out. One of my best performances in a loss that I had was with Tomas Adamic. I literally watched yeah. his fight almost every day in camp. You know what I'm saying? Almost every day in camp. Just to really pick up a lot of what he did. And it's hard to kind of pick up those kind of things in one camp, believe me. Yeah. But I tried. I tried it. I mean, it was great. He's, he's a, he's a, he was great. Another one is Holyfield. Vander Holyfield got the heart of 10 men and just, and, 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 and he has great skill. Don't underestimate the skill that he had, too. Yeah. But in, in, uh, in an overall uh, uh, stability and athleticism, he had it all. To come from 175 up to heavyweight and do that, too, is, is, is an accomplishment. Not only that, but be uh, what a, four, a three to four time world champ. It's amazing. So, you know, man, those guys, those are some of the guys. I mean, there's obviously much, much more like Tyson. You know what I mean? What he was able to do. I love the moon, man. All of definitely, them. I was a definitely. huge boxing guy. Definitely. You also picked up pretty much the year after Holyfield did the USBA heavyweight title, correct? Yeah, 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 I did. I did. One of, one of the things I did. It's kind of one of the, you know, I don't want to make it like it's not a big deal because I guess it is to some degree. Some people never get the opportunity to do that. But yeah, man, I wanted much bigger, much more than that. You know? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now I want to ask you a question: Is you've been training? You've been in the cruiserweight and the heavyweight division during your career, correct? Mm -hmm. okay. A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Okay. Now I know heavyweight. You know, we know heavyweights are known for haymakers and jabs. You know, strong punching. Yeah. How hard is it as you go into a fight, as you get into the sixth, seventh, eighth rounds, how hard is it to hold your gloves up and keep that leather in front of you and keep blocking, you know, especially when your opponent comes at you with a barrage of shots? How hard is it? Because people don't understand by that eighth, ninth round, those gloves feel like bricks on your hand. Well, see what happens is the more time you spend doing anything, the easier it becomes to deal with even things that would make would amaze people. You know what I mean? So for me, and if you watch my fights in the past, you know I like to keep my hands high. Yes. You know, throughout most of the fight. And, you know, actually, the first three or four rounds, I'll be kind of elusive, making you miss completely, rather than taking shots on the arms later in my career now, so, yeah. than uh, earlier. But I would still spend most of the fight walking big guys down with my hands up high. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just a matter of really being in the right condition and expecting to go many rounds. So yeah. needing to be in the kind of shape where you can succeed. You understand what I'm saying? Gotcha. The problem with a lot of guys is they want to be front runners. You understand what I'm saying? They want to start ahead. They want to start in control. And even I, at times, was like that too. Um, instead of being ready to sometimes dig down and have to win the fight later, take over the fight at the end. Know that you're going to have to go the distance and use your skill, stamina, and, and, and overall ability to take it. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of times you get, like, some of these big guys, man, and they get to the fifth, sixth round, and they're like, <laughs> they can barely fit their hands. Like you said, they can barely pick their hands up. Yeah. 
And it's hard for them to compete at that time. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. It's so important. Conditioning. My that's one of my thing, one of the things my dad did for me. He made me so scared to be out of shape. Oh, he I told bet. me so many stories about him being out of shape. So <laughs> I'm getting in there getting beat up. So what was one of your biggest uh, pet peeves on conditioning? Oh, I hate it running. I still hate running. I, bet. I love basketball. Basketball, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of running in basketball. But if it got something to do with that, I'll run. So what I tried to do was like a lot of my cardio training yeah. when, it was, uh, when I was fighting a lot more, kind of involved with basketball a little bit. But it never really worked. And then I had to completely get away from it because I really, really had to focus on my career. Yeah. And, you know, I just hated running. And even I could do it, and it wasn't really that hard. I tried to put music on, try to make it fun. And I wasn't the long-distance guy. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. I like, I didn't mind doing it. But then I always, you know what? I was always running with my brother. My brother was 140 pounds. And wow. keeping up with him was like literally ch chasing a deer around the park. And it's like, no, oh, I'm like, man, well, I got to keep running with this dude. Not on a sprint. I might have a better shot. But if we run in long distance, remember, I'm 210, 215 pounds and stuff. At that time, now, when I got a little bit older, a little bit further in the game, I I dropped more weight and realized how much more athletic and how agile I was, but or I could have been. Yeah. But um, running with him and sometimes coming into camp out of shape, man, it was like it was it was a it was it was a confidence kill, man. Like I'd be watching him flying around the track and I'm chasing him, and I'm like, oh my god. And it was just so, twice as much work for me to get those those results. And it's like, man, whatever. But I still hate it running. <laughs> yeah, no, I, still I, hate it. I, I know what you mean, man. I played football for 18 years, so I understand what you mean on the running. When you're on the field and like you say, when you're on the court chasing, covering your, <laughs> your, your uh, opponent, that seems to be fine. But when you're out there running for conditioning and you're by yourself, that's that's tough. Oh, you got to have. Man, it would be nice though if you can actually watch a movie while you're doing it. Maybe that might be good. <laughs> but you can't. You gotta focus. It is crazy, yeah. man. I, yeah. I hated it, but hey, I did it. You know, you gotta do it. You gotta do it if you well, wanna put in the work. Well, you know what? What's my that? time, my time going over with Tyson Fury and Peter Fury and those guys made you realize how much you did not need to run. We qualified as I know a lot of boxing people will be like, what? Not need to run? Are you high? I'm like, no, no, no. Trust me. If you, there are so many other ways to, to get your body prepared for a fight, cardiovascular wise. You know, there's an anaerobic, there's there, there's aerobic. There's all kind of different things you could do that really will prepare you, you know, properly prepare you for a fight pace. And don't get me wrong, it's okay to kind of, you know, like if you want to get out and have a long distance running and sprint every now and again, that's cool. You can do the normal thing. But trust me, man, I was on exercise bikes. I was doing uh, uh, stair climbers. I was doing like circuits in the gym with weights. There was, it was a, and it was a cardiovascular, uh, cardiovascular work. It make you almost fall out. Yeah. And every time I got into a fight, I was more than prepared for 12 rounds with those guys, even though I was 20 pounds heavier with a whole lot of muscle. Weight. So there's definitely other ways to do it if you ain't running. Gotcha. Now, are you, were you a video gamer or a video gamer now growing up? What? Are you, you asking this? You asking a guy like, a, a guy from this generation? What? Video hey. games was born in my generation, man. I, you already I, know. I understand. I understand. I came up with the Nintendo and Atari with you, brother. Oh, yes. But I wanted to ask you, how did it feel to become a part of EA Sports uh, Fight Night Round 4? It felt so good. I would do it for free. That's how good it just to not have to worry about creating my character. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? All those years we had to create our character, but you got to live that dream being in the game. Man, listen, right now there's a new game coming out. And why now is my career kind of slowing down when I'm seeing all these other new cats about to be on this new game that they got coming out that looks like real life box. Yeah. It makes me kind of upset to feel like I'm a little jipped with the whole thing. Like, man, I want my guy on there too. I'm about to have another fight just for that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yo, that makes me mad, but yeah. hey, what can you do? Um, but yo, it was to be able to just literally go and and I remember just this was like maybe a few years before I started to slow down. I remember, I mean, before I started to be at the height of it, where I started fighting, about fighting, you know, Dimitrenko, Vlad, uh, Vladimir, and, and Povetkin, yeah. and all of those level guys, right? I was um, 
I was still creating my character when I think it was Fight Night. Is it round? Round two or three? Fight Night, fight night round. One of those. It was Fight Night. No, it was the first Fight Night. The very the first, first Fight Night. night. Okay. Round yeah, one. The first Fight Night. And I remember creating my character on there. And that, that's the one that had Big Tigger on uh, as the uh, ring announcer. Yes. yes. You know I know this game, man. I remember I, I look, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you this tiny little story. I fought this dude on there. And the, the guy was rated the top 100. Online, right? This is when they just, you know, when they started the online. Started the online, yeah. And the guy was kind of—I mean, he was being nice, but he kind of talked crap a little bit, like how good he was. He had no idea there was a real guy, like I really fought. I mean, I told him a little bit about that, but I used to use the analog stick, the punch, at that time yeah. before they really start making the adjustment. Yes. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah this is why. This is why you can't. You fight, is when you fight a guy at my level, you can't use the analog stick." <laughs> I was beating him down and he was like man i can't believe you, you should have told me to use the sticks because he started using the buttons yeah and you can button mash back then and kind of win you know what i mean just with activity but if you use the sticks it would be like you'd be a little slower so you would have to literally do like fight like floyd mayweather on there but any, but anyway i did well with him at the end he ended up getting the decision by a little bit and he's like damn man i ain't even know that now that you tell me you're a fighter i believe you seeing uh. what my iq was in the game right then I fought this dude that was ranked number four and I was beating him down and he quit. And that was back before if you quit, you didn't get penalized for it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you were able to back out. He backed out. And I was like, ah, I was about to be ranked. And but, it didn't you know, it didn't go it on his record because he was able to back out huh. before they 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 hit you with a loss. Right. That was before that. So seeing people people learn all kind of little slick little things they do. Yeah. They unplug their system. Oh, we got we got disconnected. Like, come yeah, on, dog. You no, know he was getting it, beat down. <laughs> it was kind of like it was kind of like playing Madden back in the day. There was three plays on the offensive book that you, as a defense, could not stop, could not, and everybody online kept throwing those same plays to the halfback out the backfield. So I know what you mean when 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 cats would unplug the game and uh, back out of their fight. Oh, sorry, I was I, that wasn't no, no, no. directed at you. No, no, good. All good. But um, yeah, man. Uh, there's, I remember, I remember, uh, there were, there was a lot of money plays. Not say a lot. There was a few money plays that you yeah. have, and like with Madden, and I never really played Madden online, but I played 2K a lot online. 2K9 was my game. If I played that online, I was, I was, one of the better ones when I, online with it. I had a really good record at one point. Yeah. But I don't think I was good enough to beat the top top guys. But yeah, I guess it's like, you know, you play the one guy, you you lose to him, you might play somebody who's better and beat them. Just because of the style of play, you know what I mean. That you use. So there's always yeah. different little nuggets of things that you can use to kind of play to your advantage. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But I'm definitely a gamer. Oh, cool. Same here. It's a, it's a great, it, it, and that's a workout itself too, because you got to have that hand-eye coordination going. How about that, How about this generation, our generation. You know, a lot of times they give us a lot of, a lot of grief. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought I heard something. Yeah, they give us a lot of grief about the whole gaming thing. Not so much us sitting in front of the computers because we were around when the internet and all that started to come up. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we weren't really, like, we still, like, I want to go out and play ball versus even though I love to play and all that. I still rather go out and play than play six, play the game. All the time. So it's like a little bit different. Yeah. Well, I have a music I'm sorry if I do. My bad. If I'm messing up the sound. No, it's a, it got muffled for a minute there, but it's no problem. We got you. Okay. So, One second, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You still, you still good on time? Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry about that. No, no problem. You can hear me? Um, my bad. I just had to, I had to cut, cut that off. But, okay. Cool. You're, you're still good but, on time? Uh, yeah, I got a couple more. Yeah, a few, few more minutes for good. Okay. All right, when you were when you were in the ring, out of the four styles of boxing, what did you consider yourself? A swarmer, the outboxer, the slugger, or the boxer puncher? Would you say you said uh, give me the give me the, all the options again? What's up? Okay. Out of the four styles of boxing, did you consider yourself a swarmer, kind of like Mike Tyson? Uh -huh. The outboxer, I would think kind of like Holyfield, uh, the mm -hmm. slugger, you know, George Foreman. Or the uh, boxer puncher, kind of like Sugar Ray Leonard. I would definitely be more of a boxer puncher, more boxer than puncher, though. You know what I mean? Because maybe I would have been more of a puncher in the cruiserweight division if I, you know, because I'm big enough. You know, our size are comparable. You know, 
Yeah. But as a as a heavyweight, it's got to be boxer puncher. Way more boxer than puncher because I'm hitting dudes that are almost twice my size. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like it's almost sometimes like hitting a wall, but I always made them feel me. I always made always made them respect me. You know what I mean? So, it, you know, I, I had a I had a pretty good reputation with with, you know, my peers. Yeah. And uh, it's just unfortunate to sometimes you just don't win the big one. You know what I mean? Because that was really what my biggest issue has been as a fighter. But definitely style wise, that's my style. OK. And I know we were talking a little bit last night back and forth about a couple of fights last night. Who had the better knockout last night? Was it a Jogba or was it Boots? Man, I, you know, I, I didn't see a Jogba's knockout. But I don't know. Who did, who did uh, F.A. Jogba fight again? He fought uh, Brian Howard. All right. Now, it could have been the biggest highlight reel knockout ever. I can. But Boots knockout was against somebody who was a not only a former world champion, but one of the top yeah. guys in the division even now. He, top six. And he annihilated him. Lipinets, he, he literally took Lipinets off the canvas when he hit him with that left. How about that? So think about this. Yeah. He is, Lipinets is an elite fighter. He ain't no, he's not no regular guy just coming out and, oh, he's, he was a good name. No, he's not just a name. In fact, his name is a little less than what he actually is, or actually might be a lot less because he's kind of overlooked. Only one that beat him was Mikey Garcia. Yeah. He put my man Lamont Peterson into retirement, not saying that Lamont was Lamont of, of the past, but, and remember, he won a title at thir in 13 fights. So you got to give this dude a lot of credit for who he really is and for Boots to dominate him. And not only that, he made it look like he shouldn't even have been in the ring with him. That's how good Boots looked at him. <laughs> Serious. So imagine, imagine when you talk about level of competition and the way he put him out. And I mean, look, you might have broke his jaw. I don't know what happened. But yeah. he look, look, Boots is more he's more than just, oh, he's so talented. I want to see him when he puts it all together. He put it all together. You don't beat guys like that guy if you're just, oh, he's talented. No, 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 no. He's the package. He's that dude. He could take a shot. Look like he could take a shot because the Panettes got him with a good one in there last night. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. He's still got a fresh chin. He's very good defensively, so he rarely gets hit. So he's okay with that. But he is a he's a monster on the inside. He's a monster on the outside. He's a monster from the southpaw. He's a monster from the right hand. He's tricky. He's quick. He yeah. can punch hard as anyone. Man, look, they got a problem with this kid coming forward. I'm telling you. Like, definitely. I see, I see so much in this dude, man. I just, he grew up around the sport, and a lot of guys that grew up around it, like he did with all his brothers, and his dad being involved in it so long, and being so good at it. It's crazy, man. It's amazing to see a guy like that in, in evolving into what he's going to be. And honestly, I don't want to speak too soon, but you look at Terrence Crawford, you look at Earl Spence, you look yeah. at these guys, you start to think, like, damn, will they be able to deal with this dude? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I like definitely. those guys. Yeah, they... Do, they you really think, do you honestly think it will be, like, that much different with them? Now, yes, it will be different in a sense that they have different styles. But this is the problem that I have with that. You're not going to be as fast as that kid. Yeah. They're not as tall as he is. They don't have the range he has. Do they have more power? I don't know. Really I don't know. I, I really don't know. I feel like he has the package to beat all of them. He has yep. the package. I'm not saying he will. He yep. has what he needs to beat all of them and not beat them. Like, oh, it's like kind of, no, he's going to like, beat them. And it's like, because when you look at Terrence Crawford, Terrence Crawford is, is really good box all over the place. The switch both back and forth, kind of like he can but I don't think he can do it as dynamically. And I don't think he's as dynamic and as special as a, of a, of a boxer as Boots is on both sides. Definitely. Kids don't even know when he's switching. He just does it. Yeah. That's just his guess. And so it's hard to compare to somebody like that. It's almost Definitely. impossible. Definitely. You know what I mean? He got too, he got too, many, uh, too many options. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and wrap up with my last two questions so you can go ahead and get back to doing what you're doing. Uh, okay. 
with all the legends coming out of retirement, putting on exhibition fights, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones Jr., Holyfield trying to set up with Tyson, even Oscar De La Hoya coming out, even uh, Julio Cesar Chavez coming out to fight, um, I forget his name, but they were just talking about it last week. He's fighting his opponent that he fought in the 80s, his son. Um, what is it? Not Marquez, but do you- Oh yeah, I think it might be Juan Manuel. Yes, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. Yes, he's gonna fight him. Do you see yourself coming out for an exhibition fight if, if someone come come to you and said, hey, I want to come and fight you? I mean, I don't consider myself of that level. Skill-wise, yes. Uh, my accomplishments could have could have met theirs if I had more opportunity, you know what I'm saying, and fought maybe a little more within my means, you know what I mean, as far as size is concerned, because it was always going to be difficult. But yeah. when you look at a Roy Jones and a Mike Tyson and what they've done, in their careers, I mean, I have a pretty good resume of guys that I fought, but I would hate to put myself in that class. You know, I'm I'm being respectful. You know what I'm saying? People, because I know a lot of people, sports writers, be looking at me like, you really? You know what I mean? And that's, but respectfully, I feel like a lot of these guys I could have got in there with in their prime and done well, just like, you know, uh, uh, you know, they done with whoever they fought and you know, and them being champions and all, but, um. I would absolutely love for the opportunity with, with, with these fights. I mean, it's just an, it's an opportunity to get back. I still see myself as live against guys who's competing at the high level. I just – I haven't taken a lot of punishment. I really haven't. I really don't feel any different than I did in my 20s. Um, I mean, look a little different. <laughs> I don't know. Better or worse, yeah. I don't know. We all but do, yeah. um, I, I feel fine. I still go in the gym when I'm playing ball or even when I'm sparring, I don't really feel much different. I still, the hand speed and everything and the IQ is still there. I'm not, you know, short on any of it as, as, yeah. as far as I know. I still would have to obviously get in there and actually compete first to really be able to tell you if I am really still there. But but you, still you, say, good, you say you you still get in there and spar from time to time, right? With this pandemic, I haven't done it in a while. You haven't done Okay. Man, yeah. I would be out the gym for six months, not even in the gym for six months, coming to spar, feel like nothing changed. Yeah, so the so the pandemic always, so the pandemic's hurt the boxing game a lot pretty much the last year since it's been clearing up. But I know when it first came out, nobody could do anything. Nothing. You can't do any you couldn't do anything. So now even now getting back, it's a little if you know what I'm saying? And there's still a lot of a lot of inconsistencies with the training because where are you gonna go? Certain gyms close down, certain ones open. It's just too it's too inconsistent. It's hard. I'm used to having a, a spot, yeah. time, and you know what I mean? And it's just like nothing's there. No, There's no structure anymore. It's, it's kind of hard to, to really put everything, you know, everything into uh, in motion like it should be, you know? Gotcha. All right, and my last question I wanted to ask you, since, since you've been retired from boxing, what's a typical everyday day for Eddie? Haven't officially retired, but okay. still got to bring put money on, you know, food on the table and stuff so uh, I have friends that own a business and I've been working with them for like about five six years now uh, on top of that I do uh, personal training you know fitness and obviously boxing okay uh, and it's like I'm, I'm busier than I was even when I was when I was fighting like crazy yeah. like I'm constantly doing something you know then I got family I'm married with uh, my daughter has, you know I basically have a, I have a daughter and I not necessarily by just lunch my daughter, but still. Yeah. So I'm always doing something. Literally every day I'm doing something, even on my off time, even on vacation. You know what I'm saying? It seems like I'm yeah. doing something. So um, I like that though. I've always been on the run. I've always been busy. And you know what I mean? I feel like as long as I stay healthy, you know, I eat right, I live right. I don't smoke, I don't drink. You know, really, I don't do any of those things. Um, I'll be fine. And if there's an opportunity for me to ever get back into the ring, I'll take it because I, I feel like my body's still capable of doing it. Got you. Got you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, why don't you let everybody know how they can reach out to you on social media and uh, get a hold of you and be able to speak with you? Oh, well, on Twitter, obviously, I'm, I'm uh, still uh, full of Fast Eddie Chambers. On, it's on Fast Eddie Chambers on every platform pretty much that I have, which is, uh, you know, it's Twitter, there's, there's uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook. Facebook actually. There, I have a fan page, Fast Eddie Chambers. The other one is my actual uh, page, which I'm so, I, I 
go back and forth with having too many friends. So it's kind of hard to friend me on there, but uh, it's my actual full first name, Edward and uh, Chambers. So on Facebook, that's that's how you that's how you can get to me. On Instagram and Twitter is Fast Eddie Chambers. Okay, well I appreciate the time, man. Thank you. Not man. a problem, man. I, it was a good. I had a good time with it too, man. I like right. to talk, as you can tell. <laughs>